Hey, it's Ben from Digital Mastery, and I'm going to show you how to fix red blotchy skin. And I'm going to go beyond the standard technique. The standard, that's hue and saturation. Sure, we'll use that to begin with, but then we're going to take it up a notch and get a more professional result than what you would get with just that tool. So let's dive in and see how we can fix red blotchy skin. We're going to start with this picture. And my skin tone always renders red on camera. It doesn't matter what camera you point at me, my skin looks red. So let's grab a version of this picture. Let's fix my skin. Let's start off at the bottom of the layers panel and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we want to isolate the reds. We have two ways to do it. The first is to grab this little hand and just click on the red within the skin. The second would be to just change this menu from master, which is the default setting, to reds. And that's all that hand tool did as well. Doesn't matter which of the two you use, but the reason why we're doing that is because it's only once we've changed that from master to one of the other colors that if you were to look at these two color bars, you would get these things in between. And now what's set up is if I were to move these three sliders above, it would not affect cyans, it would not affect blues, it would affect, not affect most of the pinks in the image, and it would only affect the colors that are found above these bars. You'll notice the bars are two different shades. It would apply these sliders at full strength to the hues that are found directly above the light gray portion of this. That would get the full force of the adjustment. Then when you get to the dark gray bar, it would start applying less and less and less. And once it got to the end of it, it would not apply at all. So that's where it fades out. The problem is the default setting with these bars, they're way too wide. And so we're going to have to fine tune them. But just so you know, when I'm talking about the colors that are up here, it's ignoring brightness. It could be a really bright or a really dark version of this color. It's also ignoring how colorful it is. Doesn't matter if it's a mellow version or a really vivid one, as long as it's in this range, it would still affect it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab these sliders, just grab either end of them and just smash them all the way together to get them to be as closely spaced as possible. Then they're no longer pointing at the color I was thinking of, which is the red tone in the skin. So we have three eyedroppers up here to change it. If I grab the eyedropper on the far left, I can then come onto my image and whatever I click on, like the blue sky up here or the red of the robot over here or the yellow of the hat, it's going to slide those sliders to whatever color I click on. So I'm going to click on the most vividly red area of my skin, which I'm going to guesstimate to be right about there. Then I'm guessing that these will need to be spread out, but I'm not sure yet and I need to see how much have we isolated within the picture. So I'm going to take the saturation slider and I could swing it up if I really want to see, but to me that's distracting. Or I'm going to swing it all the way to the left. That's going to make the area that I've isolated black and white. And so I'm just going to look at the image and say, is there still any area of rather red skin that's showing up? If there is, grab the eyedropper with the plus sign on it, move your mouse on top of it and click on that area. But before you do, glance up here in your options bar. There you're going to find a setting called sample size and make sure it's not a high setting like mine is at 11 by 11. You'll want either a point sample or a 3x3 three three average. I'll use point sample. That makes sure it's looking at precisely the color I click on instead of averaging the surrounding area. Because if it averages the surrounding area, then it's going to select too wide of an area. If you get too much of your image selected, like mine is getting to be kind of wide, then you can grab the eyedropper with the minus sign on it and come up here and click on what you did not want to include. What that's going to do is instead of spreading out these little slider bars that are here, it's going to pull them closer together and get rid of whatever color it is you click on. So therefore, you can narrow it down to just the areas that have a good amount of that red. The problem is it's isolated those areas, but it needs to blend in with the rest of the image. So here's what we're going to do. We need to pull out the thicker little handle on the end here, but we're not sure which side needs to be pulled out. Here's how you can find out. Move your mouse onto a normal part of the skin, like this area right here. And I'm going to click, but when I'm clicking, I'm not looking at the image. I'm looking at those little bitty slider bars we've been playing with to see which side expands. So I'm going to click. Just make sure you use the eyedropper with the plus sign on it, because then it'll actually expand. So now I'm going to click. 
and I see it was the right side that moved out. I'm gonna then type Command Z to undo because I didn't wanna get the middle portion to expand. I wanted to get this little end part to expand out there. And by pointing it out, you're gonna find that the change we're making now is slowly blending into the rest of the image. And I'm just trying to get it where that grayish tone looks like it blends in with the surroundings. Finally, I'm gonna come back here to saturation. And I don't want it at negative 100, that's just so I can see what I've isolated. I'll type in zero, and now I'm gonna start with the bottom most slider and work my way up and say, what would I need to change about this when it comes to the lightness? Would I need to brighten or darken it to make it look better? I think I'd need to brighten it. So I'm gonna move this a little bit to the right until it looks approximately the right brightness. Then I'm gonna ask myself, would it need to look more colorful or less? And if anything, I'd say a little bit less colorful. So I'll move this to the left for a negative setting. Finally, I'm gonna finish with hue. Hue changes the basic color of things, but it acts a little weirdly. If you look, this slider is pointed at a cyan color, and there's no cyan in that skin tone. So ignore the fact that this is sitting where it is, and instead, within this bar, find the general color of the skin. I would say it's somewhere about in here. Then ask yourself, would you rather shift it towards the left, which would mean towards more of a pure red, or towards the right, which would get me more towards those oranges and yellows? I would say towards the right. And whenever you figure out what direction it should move, move this slider. It's just going to start in the middle, and you're going to move it to the right when you look at your picture. And as I do, I see that red shifting more to an orangish, and then to a yellowish, and then it looks like it's largely uh, been eliminated. Now, the only problem with this is I have red lips, I have red in my shirt, and there's red in the background. So now let's work on this mask. The mask determines how much of the image we could affect. Wherever it's white, it could affect the image. I'm going to choose Image, Adjustments, Invert. And that's going to take that mask and make it the opposite of what we currently have, and therefore it turns black. Now if I grab my paintbrush tool and I use a soft edge brush with my opacity and flow at 100, I can paint this change into the image only where we need it. And so I'm going to paint it in here. It's okay to paint over areas like my eyes because they're not red. But I don't want to paint over my lips. And so therefore I can isolate where I want it to change. Then I noticed some areas that it just didn't seem to affect. Like right here in the nose, there's some patchy spots. So let's fix those. I'm going to go into my layers panel and create a brand new empty layer by clicking the new layer icon. Then I'm going to change the blending mode of that layer, this menu at the top of my layers panel, down to a choice called color. And therefore, whatever I put in this layer can only change the color of the image and not the brightness. Then I'll use my soft edge brush and I'm gonna pick up colors from the image. The way you can do that is you hold down the option key, Alt and Windows, and click on the color you like. So I'm gonna click right about here and then go over the area you don't like in paint. And you're gonna be shifting its color, not its brightness. Therefore, I can come around here to various areas where I see a little hint of red left over that I might not like, and I option click, alt clicking if I'm in Windows, on a surrounding area that has the color I desire, like right here, and then I paint right over that area. If you don't want to shift it all the way, just lower the opacity of your brush, maybe paint it in at 50%. So now we've evened that out. Finally, let's just get my skin to look better because sure, I've gotten the red area to blend in with the rest of my skin, but my skin just doesn't look like I'd like it to. Down here, I can see my hands and they look great. They have this more yellowish tone to it compared to the overall red feeling of my face. So let's make another adjustment layer. And this time, let's use curves. Whenever I use curves, I always have this hand icon turned on. And you see mine turned on automatically, and that's only because at some point in the past, I'd gone to this menu in the upper right of curves, and I chose this option. That would have the hand option be available every single time you go into curves. If you don't have that turned on, click on the hand to get its background to turn dark. Now what I want to do is go to this menu. Here's where I can shift color with curves. And I could make something more or less red, more or less green, and more or less blue. The only thing is each one of these colors has an opposite. 
And if you're not used to them, the opposites are cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you don't remember those, or didn't know them ever, just go to the window menu and open your info panel. And with default settings, which looks like this, you're gonna find the colors are directly across from each other. The opposite of red is cyan. That means reducing red actually makes things more of its opposite. Reducing green makes things more of this. Reducing blue makes it more of that. So what I could do is come over here and say, I'd like the skin to be more yellow. Yellow is not found in the menu, but if I look in the info panel, I see a color across from yellow. It is blue. I move my mouse on top of the image, I click and I drag downward. And that is shifting me towards yellow or away from blue. Uh, you could also come in here and see what would happen if you go to red and say you'd like to reduce red. Just be careful because as you move things down, you are darkening. And therefore you might need to change this to RGB. RGB means change just the brightness and not the color. And you could brighten it up a little bit. Just click on the face and drag upwards. So you can fine tune it, but that change that I made affected the entire image. So now the background is not looking all that good. So now let's take the three layers that we created and let's get them all selected. The topmost layer is already selected. I'll hold shift and I'll get the bottom most of those new layers. I'm gonna then hit the group button. It looks like a folder and that will put them inside of the group. I'll then expand the group by clicking on this little triangle and I'm gonna take this mask where we isolated the face and I'm just gonna drag it on top of the group and therefore it will apply to all of them and therefore will no longer be affecting the background and I could make additional painting on that mask to make this uh, work on more of an area or less of an area. Then if it seems like you get weird looking skin tones all the time, you open images, they look like this. Then here's one last thing that might be causing the problem in the first place. If you open any image and it just looks weird overall, go to the lower left corner of your image, click on this little right pointing arrow and choose a choice called document profile. If you find the text in the lower left of your picture and it says untagged, that's the reason why the colors within your image look weird. And the reason why it happened is wherever that picture came from, let's say it was Photoshop, Somebody who saved it, like if I choose save as, they had this checkbox turned off. And there might be this checkbox in other programs or if the image was uploaded to the internet and displayed in a web browser, it probably stripped that out to begin with. I'm gonna click cancel here. Always have that checkbox turned on when saving your images. If you find this ever says untagged when you open a picture, that's the reason why your picture looks weird and here's what to do about it. Go to the edit menu, choose assign profile, and choose the bottom most choice. Then switch between the top section of options that are here. That's where you're gonna find Adobe RGB. That's where you're gonna find things like Profoto, and you're gonna find sRGB. One of those is likely gonna make the colors in your image look the most realistic. Whichever one gives you the most realistic color, click OK. Then in the lower left of your image, it will no longer say untagged and the image will likely look like it should. If you commonly work with images from the internet and you find that you are constantly getting images that say untagged, then I would suggest going to your edit menu, coming down here to color settings and don't use common advice, which is to change the little menu here, put it to the default. The default is sRGB. sRGB would mean any time that that ever comes in saying untagged, that it should assume that it's made out of this. And that's the most common setting used for all images uploaded to the internet. This will not affect any of the images that you open of your own because they should all have profiles attached. This will only affect images that have untagged in them and the only other time would be if you create a brand new document from scratch and you can always change it right here to whatever setting you would like. If you wanna learn more about how to use curves, which is the most powerful adjustment in all of Photoshop, then check out these videos where I show you how to shift the color of a white object 
or a black object. And in the process, you'll get a little bit more practice, but I'll probably go a little bit more in depth on that tool in the future. I'm Ben Wilmore. I'll see you next time.